Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you joining me. Today we have the Citizen Promaster Sailhawk 200 meter solar quartz diver, and this is model number JR4061-00F. And as usual, we're gonna look at the style, build quality, functions, wearability, and loom, and then I'll let you know what I think of this latest iteration of the Sailhawk from Citizen. Guys, also make sure you check out my Amazon shopping channel if you like this watch. I do get a small commission if you buy from my Amazon store, so I definitely, definitely appreciate it. So here you go, typical kind of Pelican style case from Citizen. Let's open this up. There we go. Now behind this foam is basically just some more Citizen branding. There you go. And I thought I had that little, uh, let me see here. Here's the outer box, yeah. They don't provide big manuals anymore. Basically everything is done online. This is a little pamphlet that kind of tells you what to do. You can register your watch, uh, show you how to set it and all that other type of stuff, which actually you'll see I go into pretty great detail on the setting procedure. All right guys, what I like to do when I'm setting the time on one of these Citizen Sailhawk or Navahawk watches, especially for the first time, is do an all reset procedure. And there are actually three steps to this. There's the all reset, there is aligning the hands, and there's also actually setting the time. So I guess what I'll do first, as you can see, I've already blown up the video so we can really see that dial. So what I'll do first is the all reset procedure, and that's basically gonna set the stage for the other two procedures. So uh, anyway, I guess what you, we need to do first is go ahead and turn the crown till the six o'clock subdial points to chronograph right there. And what you do now is you pull out the crown. The crown only has one position, uh, and that's the first position. There's not a second position where you can pull it out, like when you're setting the uh, the day or the date on an automatic. Like, you know, first position is your date, second position is your day. This only has one position, so you can only pull it out once. So you pop it out. All the hands are going to align, and it's going to take you know, about another five seconds. And you'll see all the hands are going to go up to the 12 o'clock mark, including the 24-hour hand over here at on the left, which is what, at 10 o'clock? And then you have the hour hand on the uh, over there at what, one o'clock? And then of course you have the hour, minute, and second hand. So what we do now is everything is all lined up. And again, this is just setting the stage for actually setting the time. And it's just easier to do an all reset uh, because this can be a little bit tricky and people have had problems with this in the past, including myself. Uh, this took a little bit of time, you know, to learn this. So <laughs> just want to let you, you know, this was not an easy review. But anyway, all right. So what you do is you press all three pushers at the same time. The screen's going to go blank. And then when you release the pushers, all the segments are going to light up. Go ahead and release. Now all the segments are lit up. Now when I push in the crown, you're going to hear a confirmation beep. And then the hands are going to jump around. They're going to line themselves up. So I'm going to push it in. There's your confirmation beep. You can see all the hands lining up. There you go. Now the watch has been reset. So everything is reset, including the universal time, uh, all the different time zones, all that stuff is now set to uh, UTC, uh, which is, you know, basically in Greenwich, England, which is, you know, like two or three miles outside of London. So now the watch has been reset. Now, if you want to, what you can do is you can also adjust these hands. And what you do is you pull the crown back out and these actually don't need to be adjusted. They're all perfect, but if you want to, you can rotate the crown, see the minute, uh, so, I'm sorry, the hour subdial up here at one. Notice the hands moving. Of course, clockwise is forward, counterclockwise is backwards. But these don't need to be reset. They're all good to go. But if you wanted to, you could keep pressing this A pusher. Go up here. What am I adjusting now? Let me see here. Looks like I'm adjusting the minute hand. There you go. So I'll go back. Get it back to perfect. There you go. Press it again. I think that's the um, second hand, I believe. Yep. Now you can't individually adjust the hour hand. The hour and the minute hand are linked. So let's go ahead and go back. There we go. And then if you keep doing it, it just goes back. I think it's going to go back to the, uh, the hour subdial there. Yeah, there you go. So now all the hands are basically set. All the hands are hitting their markers like they're supposed to. You cannot adjust the 24 hour dial over there. Uh, it's just the way it is. You can't adjust it. So then basically what you do is you push this back. All right, now it's going back to time. Now remember, it's been reset to 12 o'clock. So it thinks it's, you know, 12 o'clock. So if you want to reset the time, this is the third procedure. Go back up to time. Okay. Now you see it's UTC. You pull it out. And actually, before you do that, you can actually, let me see, push the crown back in. Let me see if I can do it now. 
now. So let me, let me push the crowd back in. So let me push this up here. Actually, we're going, going back or forward? I think it's going forwards. Anyway, let's find New York City. All right. Chicago, Mexico, NYC. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull time out, pull the crown out. We're still on the uh, time function right there at the top on the 6 o'clock. So SMT, basically it's summertime. So if you know, you know, uh, if you want to go back an hour, forward an hour, I always leave this off. I never worry about this. And let me see if you rotate this. I think you press this. There we go. So now that's the seconds. And then you push the A button again, hour, minutes. So right now it's currently 3.22 p.m. So let's go ahead and do this. Use the crown, rotate it to 22. Okay. Press A button again. Let's go back to three. And notice the little PM indicator, which means post meridian, by the way. So 322. Then you can also do the seconds. And then uh, 12 hour or 24 hour. We're going to keep it on 12 hour. SMT off. Go back and also adjust the seconds. So it's 322. Let's see if it's 323. Uh, actually, just turned to 323. So let's do this. So we want to set the exact time. Let's go to. Let's go to 324. Okay, rotate the crown, four. Now we can just wait for the seconds or we can adjust the seconds. So it actually jumped up one. So what we can do is we can wait and I'll, I'll do this and I'll just basically pause the video and when we get to the correct time, I'll do it. There we go. So now it's 325 exactly. All right. So everything else is set on the watch. We got the hour, the minutes. So let's, let's double check. Minutes, hour. We got the summertime off. We got 12 hour on. All right. So now the watch is set for the time. So there we go. So what's going to happen is everything's going to rotate around. It's going to go to that time. It's going to take a few, you know, probably, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds to do it. Anyway, I'll come back when it's done, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You're going to, you're going to wonder why the, the analog hands don't match up with a digital display, and I'm going to show you why. All right, we're back. Now, if you notice, it says NYC, and you've got the time is 3.26 p.m. in New York City. But the analog hands, what they're still showing is they're actually showing the Greenwich Mean Time, which I think is, what, five, five hours behind us? I'm sorry, five hours ahead of us. So over in London, it's about five hours ahead of us. So what you do in this case, and before we actually do that, let me go ahead and set the date real quick. So you go to calendar, all right, pull it out. This is probably the easiest thing to set on this watch. Rotate the crown, let's go to two, which is February. Today is what, the first, I believe? Actually, I gotta press the A button again, there we go. So it's the first. Press it again, should show the year. Let's jump up to 2020. It's gonna automatically know the date and the day for like 100 years, so you never have to worry about the correct day showing. It should show up a Saturday. All right, push the crown back in. Boom, there you go. Now you have to rotate it. If you want the, uh, the day and the, uh, the date and all that type of stuff to show on the display all the time, you're gonna to have to rotate the uh, six o'clock subdial to calendar to show that day and date all the time. If not, it's going to basically coordinate the analog hands with the digital hands. And I'll show you. So let's go back to time. Now you're thinking to yourself, hey, look, the time is still wrong. It's not wrong. What you can do is you can either show analog time or digital time. So right now what we're seeing is actually two different time zones. We're seeing UTC or Greenwich time over in London, and we're seeing East Coast time, which is what, five hours behind. If you want these to match up, Basically what you do is now we're going to swap it. So now I'm going to say, hey, look, show me New York time. So I'm going to swap it and watch what happens. Everything's going to swap. So it's going to go back and it's going to show 328. Notice the UTC it says 828. So over in London, it's eight, you know, 828 in the evening. Now it's going to you know, go back to New York time or East Coast time. And the analog hands are going to go back to 328. And of course, it takes a couple seconds to do that. 
Maybe I'll uh, pause the video until it gets there, or maybe I won't. I don't know. It's kind of mesmerizing watching these hands. I wish these hands were faster, man. I wish they would zip around like on some of the high-end Citizen um, GPS watches, like some of those satellite waves. I've never seen hands move that fast before. Y'all need to check out one of my videos on those GPS, those Citizen satellite waves, and see how fast those hands move. Especially on the F the, the, the ones with the F900 movement, it's insane. All right, so we should be there pretty quickly. All right. So now again, we're seeing time in two different time zones, okay? We there? There we go. All right, so now the analog hands say uh, the New York time, the digital, the digital display shows Greenwich Mean Time. So what you do is if you want them to match, right now we're showing 828, okay? Actually, yeah, it's 828 on the LCD display, but I want to see the time uh, match up with the analog hands. So all you do is you go backwards. So this is the B button. We're still in the time setting. Just go back. Okay, boom, NYC, there you go. So now your analog hands match your, um, your digital display. Now if you notice, if you do it again, watch what happens. Nothing, because they are synced up. Now if you want to change the time on another time zone, uh, there's two things you want to do. First, just go up, find a time zone. All right, so let's find, uh, let's find Paris. All right, so we found Paris. Now, if I don't want Paris to show up on my list as I scroll through all the different cities, I can remove Paris from my list. Say I, I frequently travel to three different cities and Paris just isn't one of them, and I don't want to keep scrolling through all those cities. All you do is you take your crown, you rotate it to set, so it's counterclockwise, one click, okay? You see it says set in the LCD display right there. You pull it out, okay? So now it's saying set. If I don't want that city to show up, say I don't want Paris to ever show up, I just press the B button and now it says off. So now Paris will not show up whenever I go through those list of cities, okay? So let's push the crown back in. All right, let's find a different city. All right, so we found Rome as well. So say I don't want Rome to show up in those list of cities either. Pull the crown out. You see it's gonna be flashing. Set means it's gonna be there. Press the, what, B button. It'll go to off. Now Rome won't show up either. So I want all of these cities to show up. So let me go ahead and put it, put it back to set. I wish it just said on instead of, you know, set. All right, so now it's back at set. Push crown back in. Let's go back to, um, was it Paris? All right, there we go. Back to Paris. Let me see here. There we go. See, Paris says off. Let me pull it out. Let's turn Paris back on or just basically make it say set. There you go. Now, all of my cities are back in that list. I, you know, I removed Paris and Rome, and I put them back. Uh, also, if you want to say for whatever reason, like this hand was covering this LC display when I was talking to y'all, if you want those to briefly move out of the way, press and hold the C button for two seconds, and the hands will move out of the way. Now, it'll, they'll actually go all the way up to 12 o'clock if you let them, but basically you just stop them whenever you want just so they get out of the way of you reading that LC display. Push the button again, and the hands go back to seeing you know regular time. So now we'll go back, and they'll go back to whatever time it is. So now we're going to take the crown. We're going to go back to time. There we go. Now obviously, it's not, what, 354 in Rome, so let's go back up to New York City, which I think went the wrong way, but anyway. Singapore, Hong Kong, all these different cities. And I've noticed about this display, this display is best read at a slight angle. So take the watch. Tilt it, I don't know, maybe 10 degrees up, and that's when the display is most easily read. Let's go back and find New York. There we go. All right, so there's New York. So now we're back. All right, so it's 3, what, 335? There we go. And that's what the analog display shows, and that's what the digital display shows. So let me try something. Let me go up to, um, so let's go to, I don't know. Let's go to Paris. All right, now we're at Paris. So let's see if the New York and Paris switch. So right now, I'm showing New York time, and on the digital display, it's showing Paris time. So let me see if the hands switch. So the hands should then go to, uh, what is it? God, I can't read it. 9.30 something, I believe. And then the digital should show, what, 3.35. So let's see if it does that. 
and it did. So there we go. So now you're seeing 335, that'll be your New York time, and now the analog hands are gonna show your uh, time in Paris. So I guess it's gonna go what up to about uh, 935, I believe, or 936 now. And let me see if I, I'll, I might pause the video and just wait for it to get there, or I might not, I don't know. It's a crapshoot, guys. Who knows what's going to happen? This channel is crazy. <laughs> Again, man, I wish these hands would move a little bit faster, but they just don't. All right, so we're coming around the corner here, coming around the bend. And again, we should go to, what, 936, I believe? I think they're, what, six hours ahead, Paris is? Yeah, if London's five, I guess Paris is six. So we should stop right now. There we go. All right, so now we're seeing the time in Paris. And if I want to match the analog hands again with the digital, all I do is I just go forward, which I believe is this way. Nope, this way. So let's find Paris. London, Paris. There you go. So now they both match if you want them to both match. Or you can, you know, have two different time zones. Whatever you want to do. So basically, guys, I just wanted to show you that because it, it drove me nuts not being able to match the analog with the digital. Uh, any other features I want to show you with this watch, uh, that's really about it. I don't, you know, care about any of the timers or the, you know, the racing timers or the yacht timers or uh, the alarms or anything like that. Uh, I, I'll never use any of those things um, the, or the countdown timer. I mean, I just like the fact that it's, you know, it's, it's waterproof to 200 meters. It's a fantastic looking watch. So anyway, guys, I wanted to show you that. So let's get back to the review. So anyway, so there you go. Put this back, take the watch out. And guys, I really like this watch for one thing. I love the way it looks. It reminds me of Chef Mario Batali's orange Crocs. And let me put him up on the left-hand side of the screen, or at least put some orange Crocs up there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Basically, it's just a looks thing. I think this is a fantastic looking watch. So anyway, so there you go. All right, now these Sailhawks have been around for gosh, at least 10 years. Uh, so a lot of y'all already know all the specs and all that other type of good stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and put up on the screen for you uh, all the basic specs, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this watch. So let me make sure I got everything out of the way here so nothing can kind of get my way while I'm doing this. All right, guys, so you're looking at a 44 millimeter case. It's 14.3 millimeters thick. It's 51.5 millimeters lug to lug. It's on a 22 millimeter polyurethane strap. It does have a mineral crystal. It's water resistant to 200 meters, which is 660 feet. It's got the C660 movement with a four year power reserve. Wow, pretty cool. Uh, it's got a screw down case back. It's got a non screw down signed crown. You've got world time for 30 cities. You got a chronograph, yacht timer, two alarms, countdown timer, and retractable hands, and I'll show you all that later. Of course, you do have the date feature at four o'clock in this LCD segment here, as well as the day. Of course, it's not windable. It is hackable. You've got Citizen's proprietary kind of cobalt blue loom, which I absolutely love, uh, and the bezel is bi-directional. So since we said the bezel last, let me check out the bezel. Just what I thought, bi-directional, kind of like a friction type of bezel, where it just kind of stays wherever you put it. Good looking bezels, you know, it's got a nice aluminum insert, very shiny. And guys, again, I just like the way this thing looks. I love the uh, kind of engraving of the ProMaster logo. Uh, I don't know if you want to call this engraving or embossing. I don't know what you want to call it. But I love this ProMaster strap. Love these polyurethane straps. Um, some are silicone, some are polyurethane. Big, huge citizen buckle right here. Uh, this watch, unfortunately, is actually a little bit too small for me, which is kind of shocking. I'm a big dude. I mean, I'm 6'3". I've actually lost about 60 pounds, so I'm kind of proud of myself. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the back. All right. There is your case back. I mean, your typical Citizen case back, Eco Drive. It gives you, you know, Citizen Watch Company, the movement, uh, Japan movement, the serial number, all that good stuff, stainless steel. I mean, your typical kind of, you know, Citizen case back. But I just love the way this thing looks. Look at that nice sign crown there. I just love the way this watch looks. And that's what really, you know, did it for me was just the looks. I really, really love this thing. Again, I'll never use any of these other features. What does that say? You know, um, tack, angle, any of the stuff that sailors use, uh, you know, windward leg. I don't know what any of that crap means. Uh, and I don't think anybody that really wears this watch is really going to use any of that stuff either. I mean, some people might, you never know. But uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I like it. I think it's just a great looking watch. Maverick absolutely flipped out when he saw this thing. 
Uh, he absolutely loves it. Uh, it is, it's bold, it's brash. I mean, you're definitely going to get some compliments on it. People are either going to love it or going to hate it. I think they're probably going to love it. Uh, I like this orange color. It actually also comes in blue. And let me go ahead and put up the blue version on the left-hand side of the screen. And they've been making these uh, Sailhawks for, gosh, at least 10 years. There are multiple different versions. Uh, the dials are basically the same. you got the two LCD segments there. Uh, unfortunately, these are not um, atomic. You know, they're not atomic timekeeping, which would be awesome if they were. But they are solar, which is cool. But they've had multiple, multiple different versions of the same watch with the same movement inside. And this is just the latest iteration, this and the blue one. Uh, just, man, just, wow, what good-looking watches. And, you know, it's a Citizen. It's going to last forever. Citizen, uh, nobody beats them when it comes to uh, solar-powered watches. They definitely uh, have got Seiko uh, on the ropes with their uh, solar-powered watches. Seiko just can't quite seem to do it as well as Citizen does uh, so far as reliability goes and no problems. I mean, I had a Seiko, one of those Patty Solars, and it was the weirdest thing. It just would not work correctly for whatever weird reason. I can't really explain it, so I sent it back. But I've never, ever, ever had a problem uh, with Citizen on two things. One, the hands always line up with the markers perfectly. And two, the watches just work. I mean, they just they just work. You never have a problem with Citizen watches. So, you know, hopefully Seiko will one day will kind of, you know, catch up with Citizen. And uh, with especially with the QC, I think they're starting to do a little bit better. But I have never, ever once had a problem with the Citizen watch, guys. So great, great QC. I mean, great designs. I actually probably like the design of Seiko Divers a little bit better. I think they're kind of, you know, they're, they're pretty cool looking. Uh, but so far as reliability and everything else, Citizen definitely gets my vote. So again, I'm not going to try it on. It's a little bit, you know what? I might as well. Let me try it on. Let me take off. By the way, wrist check. This is my Titanium Pro Trek. One of my absolute favorite watches I've ever bought in my entire life. Let me take this off. I'm going to try to get this thing on. Again, it's a little small. But I think I can get it on. And then I'll give you a loom shot as well. So let's get this thing on. Let me see here. Uh, all right, let's just do the second hole there. Come on. All right, there we go. All right, so there you go. Good looking watch, man. And I love these ProMaster straps. You got your ProMaster logo. You got ProMaster over there. Good looking watch. All right, let me go ahead and give you the... Uh, let me give you the loom shot here. Now, don't expect too much from the loom. I mean, you're not looking at Seiko's Lumabrite by any means. But, I mean, it gets the job done. And I've told you all before, I love the color of this loom better than the Seiko kind of green. I love this cobalt blue. Let me turn off the monitor here. All right. Let's go ahead and zap it. There you go. I love that cobalt blue. Good looking watch, man. Just a really good looking watch. It's actually a little bit better than I thought. There's no light. There's no backlight for the LCD. In fact, let me double check that just to make sure. Yeah, no backlight, which is kind of a shame, man. I wish they had a backlight, but they don't. So anyway, let me go ahead and cut everything back on. Let's go ahead and finish this thing up. And guys, I want you to know how long this review took me to do. Not only all the research, uh, you know, I had to do multiple takes explaining how to set the watch, how to set the time and do the all reset and do the, uh, you know, swapping of the different cities. This review was, gosh, it was a beast, man. <laughs> so anyway, if you like this watch, make sure you check out my Amazon shopping channel. They're currently selling for $290. I do get a small commission if you buy from my channel, like I said earlier, and I really, really appreciate it if you want to do that. I'll make sure to put that link in the description field for you. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification bell. I definitely appreciate it when you do that. And until the next review, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.